So now they have the book. They have their book clubs established. Now it's actually to have the time to have the physical book club. Um, it can be as structured as you want or as least structured as you want, and it all depends on the students in your class. So I recommend starting very structured by like giving them organizers, giving them sentence starters to talk about because when you give a kid a book to talk about, some kids might be able to talk for days about it. Some kids don't want to say a thing. So I think structure at the first is good, and then you can release the reins as you go on in the year and they get used to this. Um, different options you can utilize for the book clubs. You could use the sentence starter rubrics, and I'm going to show you those in the file. You can utilize the different nonfiction and fiction rubric or graphic organizers that I'm going to show you. You can use, you know, organizers that you're doing in class that you've been modeling. You can make a packet for the group and they can choose which part they want to work on. Lots of different ways. And so day one, we've established the book club. We have done our book tasting. All the groups have their books. Okay, everybody, it's time for book club. Book clubs are going to meet and you're going to set a timer for 15 minutes. All the kids in the class are going to read silently for 15 minutes um, their book club book. And then when the 15 minutes is up, they're going to all talk about how far they got in the book. I got to page 12. I got to page 15. I finished chapter one. This is just to set the bar of how fast of readers we are and how far we can read in a daily book club time because they're going to establish how much time they want to read daily as a group and you don't want to they don't want to set the time or the amount of pages for too much because then they're not going to be able to finish or not as uh, not enough because they're not going to have enough to talk about so they kind of have to see like how how their group reads and it's very important to remind them not a race you're reading for understanding, and if they finish reading whatever they've assigned for that at a time, they could reread it, and they're not going to another book or whatever it is. That way, they're rereading, and they're really focused just on that specific book club group or book club book. And so, you're going to give each book club this book club daily reading plan, and this can again go in that folder that each book club has. And they're going to say, okay, today is April 6th, and we are going to read chapter 1 and chapter 2 today. And they, this all happens before they go in, go ahead and read. So they all know, okay, today I'm only reading chapters 1 and 2. I'm not going any farther. Um, that way they all stay in the same spot. And if they don't finish that amount of reading that day, they can do it for homework and bring the book home that night. Um, just they're always on the same pace. And then how this would look like on a daily basis is they meet as a club. They decide how much they're reading. They read for 15 minutes or whatever, how much time you decide that day. They have a 10-minute book club meeting based on the organizer you've given them or something that they've been working on, a mini project, whatever they're working on as a group, whatever they're talking about. And then they do a little wrap-up and you debrief as a class just for like an accountable talk piece. And at the end of the book clubs daily, the students in the in the group come up with, okay, today again, April 6th, what's our wrap-up? What's our hashtag book club daily wrap-up? Like hashtag our character solved her problem. And then you could go around each group and each group would share a little mini hashtag or something of a wrap-up of what they worked on that day in their book club or what happened in their, a big thing that happened in their book and book clubs. Um, just to have that accountable talk piece. Now, that just some, that's what you would do daily. You could do it every other day. You could do Friday book clubs. You decide how often and when you want your kids to meet. Now, what they can work on is you can literally say, here's your book club, chat about the chapter. You can literally leave it as open as that. Or you can establish, like, we've been working on, you know, X, Y, and Z this trimester. We're going to utilize those organizers. Please work on main idea and details, uh, nonfiction scavenger hunt, and cause and effect while you're in your groups. And then you kind of like establish and set the bar as to what you want them to work on by creating a little mini journal where you could print this and just have packets for each group. Or all of the organizers are Seesaw linked and Google Slide linked. So if you want your students to do this, um, in distance learning where they could have their own ideas written down and then they talk about it or they could go on Seesaw collectively as a group and fill out organizers or they fill out the organizers during stations whatever it is 
you could utilize these links for each of the organizers. And so the organizers, fiction organizers, and there's nonfiction ones. So this is a story plot mountain that they would be working on as they read their text, character trait evidence, uh, stick figure, character change, summarizing, uh, compare and contrast, a book review, nonfiction. This is like a KWL, what we know about the topic, what we want to know, what we learned. They can make a little interview or a quiz, question and answer quiz, scavenger hunt with a nonfiction book, main idea and details, book review, vocabulary that they've learned. And again, they're working on this as a group, or you could have them work on it independently, and then they come back to book club and talk about whatever the context is that you're working on. Synthesizing, timelines, compare, contrast. And then the second section is the uh, Common Core Standard Reading, Responding to Reading Rubrics. Um, and again, it's all laid out as to what's in here and how to utilize them with this YouTube link here. Again, linked up um, Seesaw and Google Links. But you could, again, create that journal for the kids, or this could be given to them and say, here's what I want you guys to talk about. Here's sentence starters. Okay, I read, we read this book. One detail is, because believe it or not, a lot of kids need a lot of guidance, especially I teach in a high EL population. They need a lot of guidance as to how they need to talk. And once, once they have more of a structure as to how they need to talk, the reins can be taken away, and then they can learn to, to actually talk by themselves without, you know, having these sentence stars in front of them because they know the vocabulary, they know the academic language that they need to have those discussions. And there's rubrics with these, there's all sorts of things. So that's all laid out in here. But my kind of thinking on book clubs, and this is, like I said, I think the third year that I've done them, is try it. There's no harm in seeing what happens. Like, they're not getting necessarily a grade for this. Maybe you do it like a participation points or something. But just get kids talking about books because that's going to lead to better understanding of text. That's going to lead to them loving reading. And reading is the gateway to all subject areas, basically. So get out. Try it. If you, you know, fail at it, who cares? Try another book club group. Try it in your own small group first with your reading the reading group and then try it with the whole class. Start small, go big. I mean, there's so many options with book clubs. And if you have any questions, please let me know and I would love to help you out. Thanks.